Oklahoma hasn't carried out the death penalty in three years following a series of mishaps, including a botched lethal injection that left one inmate writhing on the gurney. Officials now plan to use nitrogen gas to carry out executions, making the state the first in the nation to, carry, to consider using the experimental procedure for capital punishment. Oklahoma's death chamber has been one of the busiest in the nation, with the highest number of executions per capita of any state in the U.S. But the botched execution of Clayton Lockett in 2014, followed by a mistake involving the use of the wrong drug in the execution of Charles Warner the following January, led officials to declare a moratorium on executions beginning in October of 2015 until the state's execution protocol could be refined. On Wednesday, Attorney General Mike Hunter announced that the state will abandon lethal injections and instead implement a 2015 law calling for the use of inert gases to carry out the death penalty. This is the safest, the best, and the most effective method available, and we're moving forward. Previously, Oklahoma relied on a three-drug cocktail to administer executions, but Oklahoma Corrections Director Joe Albaugh says those drugs have become expensive and increasingly difficult to obtain. I got to the point in finding these drugs that I was calling all around the world to the back streets of the Indian subcontinent to procure drugs. For the better part of uh, two years and about 45 days, my discussions with individuals, seedy individuals who had access to drugs, even other states that had access to drugs, has all proven for naught. In addition, Alba says the entire process of lethal injection had become fraught with difficulties. The attorneys and the inmates themselves have become very smart in not hydrating days, weeks up to uh, the execution date, makes it, making it more difficult to insert needles. According to Hunter, the process of using an inert gas like nitrogen is simple, effective, easy to obtain, and requires no complex medical procedures. Facts which he shared this week with the families of murder victims. We are turning to this method to carry out the justice that is due them. Justice for them and for the many years of pain and suffering they have endured after losing a family member or a loved one to a heinous act. Details of how the gas would be administered still have to be worked out, but would likely involve inhalation through a mask placed over the inmate's face. Hunter says the effects of nitrogen hypoxia are known through its use in assisted suicide. Well-documented research has shown individuals who are exposed to excessive amounts of inert gas experience fatigue, dizziness, perhaps a headache, loss of breath, and eventual loss of consciousness. Still, the process is experimental, and its use on unwilling subjects is unknown, a fact which concerns ACLU of Oklahoma legal director Brady Henderson. We don't know what's going to happen when we try to use it. We don't know the right way to do it. And here, we have to experiment on human beings. We've got to experiment on people, and we've got to do it with the eyes of the country and the world watching us. Henderson believes the new execution protocol could run afoul of the U.S. Constitution's Eighth Amendment prohibiting cruel and unusual punishment. Here we've got a method that is completely untried. We're going to experiment on a human being and hope it works, but not just hope it works to kill, but hope it works to kill in a method that doesn't inflict any of this gratuitous pain and suffering that triggers courts saying that's not constitutional, that's cruel and unusual punishment. Corrections Director Albaugh says he's not concerned about the untried nature of the process or the fact that Oklahoma would be the first state to use it. What I am worried about is being able to carry out our responsibility in a humane, efficient manner. That's all we're charged with doing. And Albaugh says he's more concerned about the families of the victims rather than the inmates who he believes have too often become famous for their crimes. To me, that's a travesty. And in order to put a stop to that, that's one of the reasons that I've agreed to move forward to explore this new protocol. We've waited too long. 
But Henderson says switching to a new execution protocol may actually put more stress on victims' families. By trying to do something new here, we're deliberately biting off a fight in the courts that could take months, if not years, at state expense and at emotional expense to all kinds of families, <laughs> all kinds of people that are affected very dearly by what happens. At present, 17 death row inmates in Oklahoma have exhausted their appeals and are awaiting execution, but the Attorney General's office has no plans to request execution dates until at least five months after the new protocols are released.